You're not sure how a Jaguar shoots, but it's presumably pretty good. You clear the entire wall of balloons, and the clown looks near, pretty, pretty impressed. All B, looks like you win. Congrats on the finest shooting I've seen in a while. The show's starting soon, so don't miss it. All right, let's fix all of our statistics here. Cavalry saver to get my gun better. The goblin pistol because of the big range of damage it can do. Uh. Oh my god, I've had these on the whole time. Oh my god. All... All of that effort. <laughs> Let's buff our pistol attack some more. Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't even think to check. I could have had that earlier. I could have had that much earlier. Well, that's fine. My character's not in too much damage. Let's buff our mysticality more. And let's... Uh, test your mind. Step right up, fellas. Step right up. If I must say so, you got the look of an intelligent and alert individual about you and I happen to have a game here to put the faculties to the rest. Uh, the simplest disgusting game imaginable. I've got a standard deck of playing cards. I show you the faces and I turn them back over and start picking cards. You guess what cards I pick and you win. You don't shuffle them? If you can memorize a, card, a deck of cards that fast, more power to you. Or if you got a touch of magic and want to try reading my mind, that's fine. Don't dig too deep. Hmm. Well. Yeah. Hmm. Do these uh, herbal remedies do anything? You take the remedy and maybe feel better? No, did nothing. And this is going to require a whole bunch of strength. The kid here with a sad look on his face. Lost my lucky bottle cap. You haven't seen the heavy, sir. No, but I'll keep an eye out. What's it look like? A shiny seal and a little chain. Hmm. <sighs> Howdy, fella. Can I interest you in the wondrous and mysterious delights of the sideshow? Hmm. What do y'all have in there? Secrets, mysteries, things too weird and disturbed to be witnessed by the light of day. Freaks? Not just freaks. Gosh, how much does it cost? For you, 300 meat. For everyone else, 300 meat. Okay. You won't be disappointed. In the event you are, no refunds. The sideshow tent is fairly large and packed with weird things to look at, like all good sideshows. A few lanterns are hanging from the ceiling, casting flickering shadows around and making everything look more eerie. The clown is hanging out in here, presumably to keep an eye on the exhibits. He grins and nods as you enter. Come on in, take your time, have a good look around. And remember, no touching. The shelves are filled with jars, and the jars are filled with things. Real weird things. They mostly contain malformed and mutated animals, pickled in formaldehyde. A three-headed kitten, a weasel or ferret with eight legs, a twisted Mobius loop of snake without head or tail, weird crazy stuff. One shelf is devoted to huge pale grubs like fat featureless white worms the size of a sweet potato. The one at the end is larger than the others with shiny black eyes. Someone has painted its face in a parody of clown makeup. Ugh. The white face has been painted with blue triangles over and under the eyes. It has a long, thin slash of a mouth. The area around it has been painted in bright red lipstick. The black eyes flash red as the thing thrashes in its jaw, grinning to face, spinning to face you and stretching its mouth open, revealing rows of yellow shark teeth. You stumble back with a cry of shock. Ha ha ha! Got you pretty good there, buddy. What is that? In a real clip, uh, in a real critter, made of rubber and clay and doll parts and such. Got an electromagnet under the shelf to move it around takes a push-button gizmo out of his pocket to show you. Should have seen your face, you about jumped right out of your boots. Hehe. <laughs> uh, you see several, several shelves of white eggs, each one painted with a unique pattern of colorful shapes. A placard pinned to the shelves says clown eggs. 
In the circus community, it's traditional for each clown to paint their chosen makeup pattern onto an eggshell. These clown eggs are archived for future reference to ensure no one chooses a pattern already used. It is taboo to wear another clown's face, quote-unquote. Uh, these must be the eggs for the clowns that work in this, serve, in this circus. You recognize a few, like the clown of the Sideshow 10, the ticket seller clown out front. Hey, sit back, please. No touching. Based on his attitude, uniquely combining attentiveness and extreme boredom, uh, you assume the clown's job is to keep an eye on the Sideshow exhibits. Howdy, fella. Welcome to the Sideshow. Thanks. What's the scene here? Down the left, we have spooky warped mirrors. Right here, we have clown eggs and pickled punks. Uh, further down the right, the freak show. Feel free to explore if you got questions. What about these uh, people, the freaks, ain't they a scream? The one with the giant eyeball head is my favorite. Nice, quiet fella. If you have a question about the other two, ask them personally. I won't be telling tales of. I wouldn't want them to be telling tales out of school. Since the eye guy can't talk, you can ask me about him if you want. What can you tell me? Oh, What can you tell me about him? Not much, I'm afraid. He joined us uh, about a year ago, maybe a little less. Where'd he come from? No idea. Weird, ain't it? You think fellow looks like that? You read about him in the papers, right? It sure is mysterious. How do you get like that? I couldn't tell you. Bet you have a theory. Well, maybe he saw some no human fellow should ever see. What about these eggs? Traditional clown thing. Placker next to him and explains in detail. Don't, do, don't get too close. Uh, what are these things in the jars? That's what we in the bigness call pickled punks. A menagerie of strange and twisted creatures such as you've never seen the like. Captured and preserved on display for your entertainment and edification. That's how the boss says it. Are they real? Real as they come. Your reflection is the mirror in short and squash looking folded like an accordion. You spend a moment moving back and forth in front of the mirror seeing how the image changes. It's kind of amusing. A bent mirror that makes you look all crazy. It makes you look stretched out and thin. Your limbs twist and writhe like snakes as you move around. It's unsettling and your muscles ache a little sympathetically. This mirror s shows you what you might look like in clown makeup. Bloodshot eyes stare back at you from a pasty white face, painted with an odd pattern of red triangles. In the flickering lantern, li lantern light, it almost looks like he winks at you. Brr. This guy is a startling sight even for a circus freak show. His one, his entire head is one enormous eyeball. As you look him order over, he stares back at you, not like he has much choice. Hello there, Arizona. How's it going? Can you talk? Guess not. Uh, this circus gig. His hands curl in a fist and his knuckles turn white with tension. I see. I understand, I mean. Do you blink? Or wink? I guess not. You move it a little side and lean over the rope for a close look at the guy. He's what he seems at first glance, a man with a giant eyeball for a head. He has an odd lump at what you would call the base of his skull. A crumpled, fleshy mass the size of a fist. With a squint and some imagination, it looks like the crushed and vestigial remains of a human head. Ugh. The second thing you notice is ankles are locked to the legs of his stool, and the legs of his stool are bolted to the floor. I'll see you around. So it's really more like that he has one swollen eye and a really small head, and that he's, you know, chained to the ground. He's neatly dressed, but his suit's threadbare and a bit out of fashion. He's smoking a pipe and leafing through a magazine. When you stop to look at him, he nods amicably. Hello there, welcome to the Sideshow. Sideshow. My name is Douglas. Hello, I'm Arizona. Delighted to meet- delighted to meet you. Are you perhaps trying to think of a polite way to ask what's wrong with me? Yeah, you got me. Don't worry, Arizona. I am in a shy show, after all. It is an obvious and natural question. Wait, you said that last bit without moving your lips. Are you a ventriloquist? Not at all. Allow me to demonstrate. He stands up and turns around. His back is the same as his front. That is, his suit has been tailored with two front sides, and he has another face on the back of his head, with his hair cut and parted appropriately. Ta-da! As he sits back down... Uh, his knees and other joints crack and pop loudly as they reverse themselves. Douglas winces slightly, though not as much as you'd expect. What in the... Surprising, yes? A bit, yeah. How is that possible? Douglas shrugs and holds his pipe up to the now back of his head so his other face can take a, pump, a puff. Are you... What's the phrase? Siamese twins? Uh, not exactly. It is difficult to, to describe, I am afraid. 
Two minds in one body with two faces? It would be closer to the truth to say two instances of the same mind with, as you say, two faces. You're right, that doesn't make sense. It took some getting used to. That much is quite certain. So he got used to it. So we ask, were you born like this? I would rather not discuss how it came to be this way if you don't mind. Okay, sorry. No apology necessary. He needs us for your wreck. Surgery was necessary to permit them in both directions. It sounds worse than it feels, I assure you. Why in the sideshow? With a regular suit and haircut, you could pass for normal. I have a contract. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot the clown making a gesture, but you didn't catch what it was. Douglas screws his throat. His throat. Plus, well, it's quite the life, you know. Free room and board, travel the world. You meet such interesting people. See you later, Doug. Lady here with her head sticking out of a hole in a metal box. Hello. Hello there. Enjoying the carnival? Well, it's interesting. Yes, I'm sure it is. Can I ask you something? What's your name? I'm Janet. Are you Janet the Pan? Sorry, I totally don't remember this part. Um, I'm Arizona. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Arizona. Wait in the box. That's a personal question, isn't it? Oh, sorry. I'm teasing, dear. Would you like to see inside? Sure. She whistles to signal the clown he moseys over. He unlocks the box, the door in the front of the box, and throws it open with a theatrical flourish. Ugh. Instead of Janet's body, you see a tangled, complicated assortment of glass tubes and pipes. Ticking clockwork gears and pumps. Liquids of various colors, mostly red, slash through the tubes. A large bellow near the top inflates and slowly deflates. It's some kind of trick, right? You're folded up behind a mirror in there or something. No trick. The clown chuckles and shovels back to the round of the back of the box. He opens a hatch and waves at you through it, then saunters back to his place by the shelves. I'll say it's amazing, but I don't think so. I'll take it as a compliment. It's educational, I imagine. The larger take on the left is my stomach, if you'd like to see what I had for lunch today. There are two things that I think this... There's a Mystery Science Theater 3000 movie called The Brain That Wouldn't Die, that is sometimes erroneously called The Head That Wouldn't Die, uh, to the point where this error is actually used in the movie when the opening title refers to it as the head that wouldn't, as the, I think it's the brain that wouldn't die. The closing credits call it the head that wouldn't die. Uh, it's a crappy 1940s, 50s uh, horror movie. I think it's what you would refer to as a B movie. But the main woman is referred to as Janet. And at one point she's decapitated and brought back to life through some convenient, mysterious scientific process. And her head, just her head, you know, she's like here up. Uh, lives in a little pan um, full of mysterious scientific goo. Uh, so they jokingly refer to her as Jan in the pan. Various liquids slosh around in their tanks and pipes for a minute. Weird, gross, but it is educational. How did this happen? Were you in some kind of terrible accident? I'm sorry, but I can't talk about that. Of course, sorry. It must be a painful memory. Her calmly composed face creases into a slight grim grimace as she shoots a sidelong glance at the clown. Yes. Well, it's nice to meet you, Janet. So long. Oh, that's so... That's so gross, even though it's so cartoony. How are you feeling? If you're referring to my condition, don't worry. I've grown accustomed to it, more or less. Oh, I really don't want to hear it. Anatomical learning. You know what makes a human being tick and how to stop one from ticking. Come to that. Oh, that's so gross. Oh. <sighs> there's this, uh, there's this Neil Cicerega song called, um, Cabinet Man that, like, legitimately makes me feel so gross that I, I can't, <laughs> I can't listen to it, even though the song's pretty good. Uh, hmm. Well, anyway, you may notice that everyone involved here has a great deal of fury or confusion for the people that uh, put them here. Ah, oh, it's so gross. <laughs> hot food. Red hots. Calls the clown behind this food stand. Red hots, footlongs, two kinds of mustard. Also a small sign that says lost and found. Can I interest you in a red hot... A red hot foot-long sausage? 250 meat. What are the condiments? 
onions, pickle relish, three kinds of mustard, and two kinds of ketchup. What kinds of mustard? Brown, yellow, and blue. Blue mustard? I'm all out of the blue. Sorry. Out of the blue. That's funny. Uh, two kinds of ketchup. Ketchup and catsup. No thanks. What are they made of? They're pork. What else do you make a sausage out of? I was wondering if you had a vegetarian art, uh, option. Uh, mister, this is a carnival, not our herbival. You've been saving that one up, haven't you? Uh, for years. Thank you, sir. That's good. I like that. Even if all these clowns are evil, like most clowns are, I imagine, um, I've got to say, that was a pretty good joke. Are they actually a foot long? I'm going to stop you right there, seeing as they're ladies and children present. You want one or not? I'd like to see the lost and found. Uh, sure thing, what'd you lose? Lucky bottle cap. Appears you're in luck. This one yours? Puts the box on the counter and turns his back for a moment. I'll grab this. Yep, that's the one. Thanks. No problem, sir. Hi, sir. You found my lucky bottle cap? This is it? That's the one. Thanks for finding my lucky bottle cap. Man. That was just a good deed to do then, huh? That's alright. Hot food, cold drinks, and tepid candy. <laughs> cold drinks! Ice cold sarsaparilla in bottles. Howdy, sir. Care to treat yourself to an ice cold soft drink? You said you're selling it in bottles? That's right. Got these new fabled crown cork cap bottle cap crown cork crown cork bottle caps and all. What kind do you have? Root beer, ginger beer, and sarsaparilla. How about cream soda? Nope. How about orange? Nope. Plain tap water. Nope. Iced tea. Nope. Lemon lime. Nope. Grape. Nope. Plain tap water. Snozzleberry. Nope. Snozzleberry again. Plain tap water. Orange. Okay, we're looping. What kinds do you have? Uh, black cherry. Nope. Okay. Grapefruit. You make them yourself. If you're asking, we have a wagon dedicated to brewing and bottling three different kinds of soda in our Trevon caravan. No. We stock up as we pass through large towns. How much are they? 205 meat for the deposit on the bottle. Cotton candy, calls the clown from behind this food stand, makes a fweeute sound with a slide whistle. Come try this just invented conjec confectionery delight. 